Festive greetings everybody and welcome back to LMM and I hope that you've had a Merry Christmas, a Happy Holidays or whatever it is that we're calling it these days and I hope that during this festive period with the difficult circumstances that we have all around the world at the moment that you've managed to make the best of it and you've got what you wanted. Now if you haven't got everything that you wanted and you've got maybe it's been given money and it's burning a hole in your pocket, then remember, we have merch for sale. Uh, the link to our Teespring store is coming up now where we have lots of different shirts and various things that you can buy which help support us and also show how much you're enjoying the channel. Now, obviously, I'm at my board at the moment, so that must mean it's now time for another episode of Laurie Goes A Little Loco. And if you are enjoying what you're seeing on the channel at the moment, then the links to the rest of our social media are coming up on the screen now. Today, I thought I'd do something different and I present to you the first new locomotive that I have bought this decade and for, well, quite some time. In fact, I'm not entirely sure when I last bought a locomotive. And it is this. Now, once you've got past the initial disappointment of the fact that it is obviously the Hornby Holden tank, we'll get on to the reason I bought it. And that was that it was £10 which is not much. You can't even buy a locomotive secondhand on eBay for £10. And for the guarantee that it would work as it's brand new, I thought I'd go for it. Now, most of you will be thinking, but Laurie, that's part of a set. Did you buy the set? No, I didn't. Uh, I was down at Chatham Dockyard doing one of my turns before Christmas, and there's a model shop there, and the gentleman there had bought several of the sets and had split them and was selling the various bits off. £10 for a locomotive, I thought, that's pretty good going. Now, it's obviously in quite a garish Santa Express livery and I appreciate that Christmas has now passed so it seems a bit strange to be showing it now. Well two reasons a I couldn't fit into the schedule beforehand and b well here we are and the main reason for getting it isn't to run it around a Christmas tree it's because I thought it'd be a good thing to share with you guys is having a go at weathering. We know that several great western locomotives ended up moving into NTB service and that's why some of them survive and so I thought it'd be quite nice to weather this up as an NCB locomotive and change the livery over and just have a go with it. So that's that's the reason for getting it and also I just I couldn't resist a locomotive for a tenner. So what is it? Well, it is the Hornby Holden tank or otherwise known as Great Western 101 and it should look like this. This is how it should be. Now this thing has now featured in the Hornby range since I think 78 and has carried a whole host of liveries. Now it is on the same standard 040 chassis as most of their starter locomotives. That includes the Caledonian Pug, the Hornby D-Tank. There's the thing that used to be the four-wheel Thomas and is now some freelance abomination. And of course, there's a diesel shunter that fits on it as well, which is a BR class something, but I can't remember off the top of my head. In truth, it's like the D-Tank in that it's based on something, but it's based on it loosely doesn't look exactly like this. The real prototype was a lot more squat, had a very complicated valve gear on it, and it was also built as an oil burner. James Holden designed it to show the advantages of oil burning locomotives. And it was designed to run on a light railway. They never did it though. And it ended up being used as the Swindon's Works shunter, which is what it's known for. And in doing that, it enjoyed a long and happy life. That of course is a lie because the Great Western Railway loved standardization and this one-off non-standard tank engine didn't really fit into that. So it was withdrawn and scrapped 10 years after it was actually built. It was built in 1901 and had disappeared by 1911. So what Hornby have done by making this model have immortalized this silly little tank engine, which really well, shouldn't be as well known as it is, but because of them and making it, it's, it's known by well, most model railway people because a lot of kids and a lot of people have started in their hobby with an engine like this. As we said, obviously it should look like this. This is Great Western 101. And uh, Hornby have made various other versions of it. And uh, I think I've got a BR version somewhere in my storage, which is like 103 or something. And so they have changed the numbers, but basically that's what it looked like. No variation. Obviously did not look like this one. But what I thought I would do here is, this is not necessarily the first batch, but one of the first batch. I've got the nice old box from the period these actually were released. And this is a new one. So I thought we'd have a comparison and just see what has changed in the, well, 40 odd years between this coming out and this. And while the answer isn't actually that much, I was expecting them to be a little more different, but it is actually the same thing, isn't it? The most obvious difference 
is the fact that the coal load in the back, well on this one, it's slightly more shiny just because it's newer. Interestingly, the roof on this one's more shiny than this. It's more of a matte finish. The colors are different, that's obvious. And this one has the running number of 012 rather than 101. That is basically it. The only thing is there is a little nipple on top of the dome here, and that's not featured there at all. So it might just be a bit of the molding and that's been sorted out for this one. Some of the detail across here, the rivets on the smoke box, maybe a tad less uh, protruding on this version, but that's just because I guess the mold's getting tired. It does actually feature on the back here. It has a fully detailed cab, although none of it's actually lined out, but it is something that's relatively easy for you to pick out yourself, which is always something positive. Apart from that, they're fairly simple. They feature like handrails which are molded onto the body. On this one, it's picked out in gold, as are the cab side rails, which are missed out on this, which does actually make them stand out a bit more on, on this model. It makes them a bit more prominent, whereas on this one, they kind of blend in. It misses a lot of the details that you've come to expect on a modern locomotive. For instance, on the filler caps, there's none of the screw mechanism that holds it down tight. On the other hand, it is a kid's model. It's a way of getting into the hobby. So they're fairly, well, there's nothing sharp, there's nothing loose on this that you can really damage. In fact, you can just chuck it around and it's not really going to take any different kind of any real damage. You might scratch it, but it's a kid's model. It doesn't really matter. It is, however, quite nice. Some of the companies and Hornby have released, say, their Paddington My First Hornby sets, which aren't really compatible as you move forward and are pretty nasty. Whereas things like this are a good way to start in the hobby. It works on the standard track, it works with the standard controller, and it does kind of fit in with the standard everything else. Sure, the detail is not there, but in the background, it's a passable thing. The other big difference between the two is the running gear on this. On the original one here, we have the the silver that Hornby enjoyed, whereas now we're on the, the more standard blackened running gear that they seem to employ these days. And it brings us on to the next point. These are well known for being pocket rockets and able to travel off at something like Mach 32 as they leave your bend and fly off into the stratosphere. In fact, it's well known that several of these are in orbit around the Earth when they left the track at full power. But I believe that in this version, Hornby have now changed the motor to make it not quite as fast, but also to give it a bit more control at lower speeds. You can actually use it as what it's designed for, for moving things around slowly. So that's the main thing I want to do is really compare that and see how much there's changed and how much better this one is than that one. Because you know, if it is meant to be better, I might just take my body on this one and stick it onto that one, which is part of the idea of this. And also, yeah, just to see how much things have changed in the, in the years. And the answer is really not that much. Things I do like about the model to both of them, I do like the copper chimney cap that's been picked out. I like the, the copper dome, which does look quite plasticky. In fact, more plasticky on this one than that one, because this, this one just looks plastic full stop, whereas this one, the finish on it's nicer. It looks more like a livery, whereas this one does look like a toy. It's amazing, isn't it? Toy, prototype engine, you know, based on something prototypical engine, toy, actual engine, toy, actual engine. So, but it's the same thing. It's just the color makes a difference, isn't it? And the finish on that does look quite plasticky. I like the fact that you've got the safety valves inside the safety valve bonnet there. No whistle to speak of. I imagine it would be on the front of the cab somewhere, but no, super detail is not included on this. And little things like we do have the handbrake screw in the back of the bunker. Now, both these models potentially could have vac pipes put on them somewhere in my collection. I'm sure I've got some vac pipes to stick on it to make them look a bit more like a, a locomotive that has vacuum fitted. Um, and it would actually be fitting for this because it would have been vac fitted to run a train. So with that, I quite like it. I like the, the gold on this being picked out. It makes it look kind of festive and everything. And uh, yeah, for a tenor, I can't really complain. They weigh about the same. The detail underneath is about the same. There's nothing really changed there. Material of the wheels is different, if anything. But just one of those good old designs. So with that, I think the most obvious thing to do is I had a new toy for Christmas. And it's this Newton meter, a very high quality one, of course. And I want to see if, as well as performance, of going for a response, how much difference it actually makes to its pulling power. Maybe it's become a bit more powerful, maybe less. Let's find out. And just how well they run. 
So with that, I'm going to lose the plateau and let's get ourselves set up and uh, see just what these things are like. And here we are with the temporary layout, which is your basic Hornby Oval off track. And you might notice a couple of new acquisitions are potted around the layout, notably the Dennis RS and the Chatham Docks Waggle, which were both Christmas presents from a couple of my friends, which I thought was very nice. So first off, we shall try this, the Hornby original, the one which is the prototype, and use this as a benchmark. Now bearing in mind, this one hasn't been serviced yet, I haven't got around to it, and it is kind of as it was coming out of the box. And there's a slight noise of a dry motor there, just a tiny little bit of a dry motor noise, but it goes well enough and it will accelerate up to, I mean, that's at half power and we're going at whatever. And I, if I launch to full, it will just launch off the board, I think. But you know, it's a, it's a kid's model, isn't it? It runs relatively well. Now, if we slow this thing down, we can get it to a relatively decent crawling and prototypical speed. I mean, that's more or less what it would do. Now, it has definitely got a bit of a limp on it. Ooh, are we still there? Okay, so maybe it's not quite happy. And I do feel that maybe this will be improved with a service. But it's a, an acceptable speed and we can bring it to a stop slowly and start away again. Fairly, ooh, ooh. Yeah, okay. It's also a slight grinding noise there. So it's not brilliant, but let's have a gander and see how it compares to the new one. Now, this is the first time I've ever run this. So this is a, a good step. Ooh, that is notably smoother and notably quieter. So this is, yeah, the first time I've ever put this on the track, despite having it for some time and seeing what it is. So it's definitely a different motor because it makes an entirely different sound. And the performance is completely different as well. And if we bring it around here, we'll see what it will do if we... Okay. Wow, so at full power on this controller, we're not even doing the same speed that this was doing at half speed. So possibly the gearing is totally different, but certainly it's a completely different locomotive now in the terms of it, the way it handles. So if it goes slower, that must mean, or hopefully mean that when we bring it here and we slow it down, oh yeah. Oh yeah, look at that for a crawl. Oh, that's much better, isn't it? I mean, it is a brand new model, so I expect this, but we're talking a completely different kettle of fish now. Oh yeah, look at that, that is far, far better. So this does actually make for a realistic yeah, look at that. So we could actually turn this into, as I wanted, a NCB shunting locomotive and bang around a yard with it. And just to kind of emphasize the difference, we put them both on the track at the same time. Yeah, so twice as fast, more than twice as fast. Yeah, it's, that was done a lap and a half in the time it's taken the other one to do anything. Interestingly, I wonder what difference this has made to its actual ability to pull trains. With that, next thing to do is to bring out this little doohickey. It's a very advanced piece of technology. We're going to hook it onto the 101 first and get a, a base reading and see if there's any difference. So plug it in and away we go. If it wants to, there we go. And this is pulling, oh, about about 20 grams realistically definitely not running very well so 20 grams or yeah 0.2 of a newton and then let's see what happened on this one if there is any notable difference at all and the answer is yes hugely this one isn't it's pulling about it's not even pulling 10 grams. So five grams. Very interesting. So the older motor, it doesn't feel like there's that much more weight, but this one has got a lot more pulling power than that. In fact, if that's pulling about five grams, that's pulling 20. That's, this is a notably more powerful and better engine. And so that's interesting. Although we do get the better performance with that. And it has long been discussed amongst railway people that 
the motors in these are far too powerful for what they are. They, you know, they give a far too much pulling power for what they should be able to. So for the end of this, I thought we'd give this new Chaton Wagon a run with some of my older stock. That will put it with that. And we'll just run the two of them and just enjoy the two of them running for, well, for the enjoyment of it. I even got a brake fan out, as you know. So for starters, we'll get out Great Western 101, couple that up and we'll see what happens. Oh, brilliant. And immediately my brand new wagon derails. I don't even know why it did, but there we go. And again, well, that's, that's fantastic, isn't it? I wonder if it's just my janky track, which uh, it's fine wheels can't quite cope with. Let's swap that out then and couple that over, swap you with that. See if you'll do it. And we'll just put you at the back of the train where it's the weight of the train possibly won't have as much effect on it. Let's try that. He says, successfully pushing the train back on the rails. Okay, that solved the problem. Brilliant. So, or has it? Oh, everything's derailing. Fantastic. Well, this is a success, isn't it? Monumental success. Stick that at the back, stick that at the back. And we'll carry on. Now, I know that my track isn't laid down and the board does kind of undulate. So it could be part of that. And that's better. That's good. We'll just, hopefully it will make a complete circuit and we'll be happy with that. So, I spoke too soon. Everything's derailed. Absolutely everything's derailed. So what we'll try, just because we can, we'll just try inverting the direction of this and see if it, it's more happy going the other way for narrow pan or real reason, because railways, yeah? And just try that. Now this does look very pretty, doesn't it? A little Great Western tank and a train of wagons. The kind of thing that kind of, despite being totally not prototypical at all, you kind of can believe is a real thing. Well, that makes no sense. I don't understand why it works this way and it doesn't that way. It makes absolutely no sense. I, I don't understand, but it just shows that it's my useless track. It also kind of goes show that sometimes it's just a wagon being weird rather than anything else. But there we go. So that looks quite nice. And with the train behind it, I can get that kind of speed running with it. But the loco is certainly a bit janky, isn't it? It's a bit unhappy. It's not the smoothest thing. It does need a crew though. It's the open cab on this very much demands a crew to be fitted on it. And there's a bit of noise from the motor as well, but that's 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 okay. And that looks quite nice as it trundles around. So as we bring this in now, the next question I think we'll be asking is if we take that off and park you there, just how much of an improvement is it if we run this one well first of all i mean look at that for a crawl to start off with that is superb crawling speed oh this is going to make a really good little locomotive to uh to build a into a shunting engine because look at that it might also almost have a little bit of slip on it with this very small train so it's a lot more suited to being prototypical of what the locomotive would actually be able to pull that is, that is a lot better. That is a lot, lot better. I'm impressed with that. That really does show some improvement. And this is what I hoped was going to be there. There'd be some very obvious difference of how far Hornby have come in the last few, well, last few decades. They're not just producing the exact same model. It is actually something very different. Hmm. It shows promise, doesn't it? Look at that. Now, this is a lovely old train. Oh, I'm very chuffed with this, actually. It looks very nice. Now, somewhere in my storage, I've got some mid-Suffolk wagons as well, so I can, you know, have wagons for some of the railways I volunteer at, which is all very, very nice. Oh, that's very nice, isn't it? It does make a totally different noise as well. 
and I get the sensation with this that if I put much more behind it that will be well that will be enough and uh, it won't be able to pull more this thing will just fly around as we've seen before with on this loop of track with just well everything you know it just will keep on going huh. well I'm quite happy with this Oh, look at it go. And it will fly along, but this thing, yeah. Look at that. That's brilliant. Well, there we go. The little Hornby Santa's Express Holden tank. For a tenor, I really don't think I've done too badly at all. In fact, I cannot complain at all. I might end up putting this body onto that and getting the 101 to run just as well but uh and then putting this onto that on the other hand i might just go ahead with my modeling project and see how i get with weathering it up so let me know guys let me know what you think about it let me know what livery you think i should go for i'm definitely kind of thinking of uh off national coal board and doing something with it let me know how you think i should do it and let me know if you managed to buy a locomotive for similar money which is as performed as well as this obviously once i've given this a service we'll do a comparison again in the future and just see with this in tip-top condition how good it is compared to that in the meantime though guys thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this and uh, i hope you've had a good festive season and in the meantime if you have enjoyed this how about clicking over there for another one of lorry goes a little loco or perhaps over there and this time we're going to have a look at the orient express when i went out to belgium and drove the prestigious train uh, with that i'm going to see if these two will actually function together just about just about it doesn't look too terrible does it thanks for watching guys see you next time